who are most astute uh, among us, you'll notice that uh, this uh, section of Acts we actually read last week. Um, and for those who are, are with us for the first time, just so you know, we are nearing the end. In fact, one more Sunday of uh, an Acts series that we've been in for over a year. Uh, and so it's uh, very exciting as we, as we come to the end and see all that the, the Lord is going to do. Uh, but today I went back before uh, ending next week because uh, today's a special day in the, in the life of the church. We, uh, at the first service, this service, we're welcoming two new members uh, to Church of Our Savior. And then at the, at the 11 o'clock service, we're going to be baptizing two children and one adult. And so praise the Lord, it's a, it's a time of, of real encouragement and, and celebration. And I felt like this uh, little bit at the end of what Chuck preached from last week, uh, it, it speaks a bit to the importance of, of Christian community in the believer's life. Uh, in fact, I don't think that, that Chuck covered this little, little bit much last week in his sermon at all. But the truth is, we need Christian community. We need it. We desperately need it, and to avoid it or to neglect Christian community as a believer in Christ, you do at your, uh, at your own peril, and we've learned that throughout, uh, throughout the, the book of Acts, but you know, uh, if we look back to the time of the pandemic, I don't know if you saw any of the uh, statistics there, and some of you may have experienced yourself, but uh, a third of all churchgoers just stopped going to church. And, you know, for many reasons, but the, the real alarming fact has been that of those third that stopped going, it's been very slow to, for people to come back, to come back. They've just stopped going, and therefore, they're, they're not having Christian community in, in their life. But the truth is, the scriptures tell us that, that it's not good. The very first thing that God said was not good is it's not good for man to be alone. And, and so we made Eve as a helper for Adam. It means we are made for community. We're made for relationships. We need it. We were made and created this way. Jesus modeled in his own ministry and life community, didn't he? He called the disciples to himself, and he walked in life for three years in ministry. Talk about a fellowship group, right? Uh, they walked with life together in deep and meaningful ways. When Jesus sent the, them out on, on mission, did he send them alone? No. He sent them out two by two because we need community. We need it. It's an important part of who we are. And in this text this morning, and Paul's life really speaks to the importance of Christian community in our lives. And I want to look at it uh, for just a few minutes this morning before we get, it out of the real, get on to the real fun stuff of this morning of welcoming some new members here to the Church of Our Savior. Uh, but finally, after all this time... We know that God had called Paul to Rome, right? That this is where he was going. And Paul made his appeal way back in Caesarea. Uh, he had made his appeal to Caesar because he was getting a, uh, he was getting a bum job done of justice by, uh, by the, the Roman authorities and the Jewish authorities back in Jerusalem and Caesarea. So he appealed to, to Caesar, and he's been granted his appeal. And after a, a long and slogging truck, trek, he has finally arrived uh, in Rome. And that's what we hear about. Uh, and in, starting in verse 14... Uh, as Luke is, is recounting the account as he traveled with Paul, he goes, uh, as they arrived, this is what we're told, in, oh, actually verse 15, and the brothers there, when they had heard about us, came as far as the forum of Appius and three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. Paul thanked God and took courage. Paul's been through a lot, hasn't he? You know, from the time he left and set sail from, uh, from Caesarea and finally arrived, he left in the, uh, in the fall, which was a bad idea, right? Because uh, when they left, they encountered the, the nor'easter storms, and it was just a, a, a sledge to try to get through, and it was perilous. Uh, and, and Paul's been through all of that. And then they finally arrived, just so, you know, so you have some perspective here. It's now the spring of the following year. So this has been like six months-ish. Uh, that he's been going through all this just to try to get to, to Rome. Uh, on this, he's been through uh, an unjust imprisonment. He's been through uh, this strong seas 
which eventually, uh, well, at first, and then he had to face a mutiny, right? Uh, there was a mutiny on that ship. Uh, and then there was the shipwreck itself before finding another ship and be, being rescued and finally uh, making it here. There was lots to be discouraged about, wasn't there? There was lots to be discouraged about. I mean, God had told him that he was going to Rome and God had spoken to him along the way. But man, when you're in the midst of that kind of storm, that kind of shipwreck in your life, it's pretty, pretty easy to get discouraged, isn't it? You ever feel that way? And the storms of life, even, even though you know God's there, you, you know that, you know, you, you, you've maybe gotten some insurances from the Lord. It's still hard, easy to get, get discouraged and uh, easy to, uh, to be dismayed in, in the process. And it's easy to fall into despair and to think there's really no hope at all especially when we're on our own. But what's, what's interesting here and powerful, I believe, is that what happened when Paul encountered uh, these, these brothers and sisters in Christ, because that's what the word, it doesn't just mean men, it means uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. When they came, when they heard Paul was there and they came to meet him, what did it do for Paul? It filled him, we're told, with thanksgiving and with courage. Thanksgiving and courage. Christian community Filled Paul with courage and thank and a heart of thanksgiving, even in the midst of all of the struggle, even knowing that this he still was imprisoned, things are gonna get hard and they're gonna get even worse, like death worse. Uh, but he in this moment is filled with thanksgiving and he's filled with courage because of these fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that came to join him and to meet him there. What a powerful testimony to, to the importance and the power of Christian community in our lives. And, and I say this not just for the new members who are coming in to join us and, and for those who are going to be baptized, entering into the, the bigger family and body of Christ. It's so important for each and every one of us and to avoid it and to neglect it is to our own peril. But let's look at each of these uh, and, and for just a moment, and how the Christian community, as they came around Paul, were able to fill him with such thanksgiving and such courage. Well, first of all, let's look at thanksgiving. The, the word itself well, that, that's translated here, the, the Greek word is eucharisto. Uh, it's the Eucharist, right? You don't, I usually talk about the Lord's Supper because people nowadays hear Eucharist and they don't know what the heck they're talking about, right? There's already this guy standing up here in a dress and now he's talking of these words I don't even know. Uh, and so I talk about the Lord's Supper for, for the most part. But, but Eucharisto is part of the, you know, it's the great Thanksgiving. It's celebrating uh, what God has done. Uh, and it's made up of two words, good and grace. Good and grace. And so what thanksgiving is in this context, it's, uh, it's, it's gratitude for God's good grace that's been at work in the world. And so for Paul, this community of believers that came to see him was an example of God's good grace that was at work. You know, when, when we try to do life on our own, when we isolate ourselves, Every one of our problems, they just, they just kind of stack one on top of the, of the other, and they become more burdensome and more burdensome, and the more and more, the more they, they just break us and they can lead us into despair, especially when we're just living in our own world, right? We can't see the greater picture of what God's doing, but what, God, what Paul got to see when these believers came around him uh, and, and met him there was not only thanksgiving that, hey, there's some people here that are for me and everyone's not just against me. It wasn't just that. It was that Paul got a picture to see the grace of God that's been at work in the Roman church that was growing. You know, a year before this, Paul had written his letter to the Romans, he had, he had heard about the community and some of the issues that were going on there. And so he wrote to the church there that was, that was growing. And now that they've come out to see him, guess what he sees? God's grace is real, man. It's real. And you know how I know? I, I know I've experienced myself, but sometimes the more we experience it, you know, it can, get, can seem like a far off distance sometimes, can it? But then these people come. 
that are examples of people that have been transformed by the gospel of grace in their own lives. What an encouragement to Paul to say, this all hasn't been in vain. I've suffered a lot. I've been through a lot. But God's working in their lives, which means he's at work in this world. God is alive. The resurrected Jesus is moving and working in a powerful way. And what did it do in his own heart? It gave him a heart of thanksgiving. You know, it can be hard sometimes to feel thanksgiving, can it? You know, I know especially as Thanksgiving is right around the, the, the bend here. And, you know, the, it can be a hard time for, for a lot of people who've lost loved ones, who've been going through difficult times this year, are struggling. Maybe there's broken relationships in your life, and it's so hard to find uh, just, a, a, an, just a glimpse of, of thankfulness in your own heart. This is when we need other people around us. We need community. We need to be talking about it. You know, I always hate when you, go to, when you go to Thanksgiving dinner and there's always that one person who's like, hey, let's go around and everybody talk about one thing you're thankful for, right? Because <laughs> I always feel like, oh, crap, what am I thankful for? <laughs> am I thankful at all? And I suddenly, you know, I, I go into like a, you know, a little bit of panic goes within me, like, this better be good, you know? It's better. And I'm the pastor, you know? And I'm the one who has to pray, right? Because, you know, the, 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 the paid professional always has to be the one who does the prayer at Thanksgiving. Uh, but it feels like this major burden. But, you know, it does have, even though I feel that in that moment, yeah, you know, the truth is, you know, as silly as it sometimes can be, as people go around and start talking about things they're thankful for, it has, it has a powerful effect. You're like, wait a minute, there are things to be thankful for. There's things that maybe I didn't see in the moment. And when you're in the Christian community, what that means is God's grace is at work in the world. Even if I can't see it right now, God is working in a powerful way way in people's lives, transforming people, and it gives us hearts of thanksgiving. And we're told in the scriptures that we're to be thankful always. And so we need help with that. Christian community isn't just an option. It's absolutely necessary. But that's not the only thing that Paul was filled with, right? He was also filled with courage. He was encouraged. He was filled with confidence. Uh, That word, it means to be emboldened by the strength of God by faith through the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to have courage, to have courage. And there was something about this group gathering around that helped embolden him, that the Holy Spirit worked in him when he saw them. It encouraged him. It gave him courage and boldness. Because I think, again, he looked at that and he said, hey, my, I've been doing this, for, you know, the Lord called me to this. I've been at this work. I've dedicated my life to it. And there's real fruit of what's happening here. God is moving in other people's lives. The gospel's working. It's transformative. And it gave him courage as he knew what was ahead of him, what he was going to have to face, the continued struggles. Death itself was just around the door. It also showed him that, that he wasn't alone. You know, faith, seeing God, the faith of others and God's grace at work in them, it gives us courage. It gives us courage to realize God's still working. You know, that's one of the why testimonies are so important. For us to hear testimonies from people. For us to hear how God's working in their lives. Because, you know, it can be so hard to have the courage to share our faith with others, can it? So hard. You know, because, you know why it so, feels so hard? Because the devil doesn't want us to do it. <laughs> we're, we're, we're fighting against hell itself. And so, of course, we're going to feel like it's hard and, and we don't want to do it. But when we see the inbreaking of the kingdom of God in people's lives and we hear about it, It has this emboldening and courage. It gives us courage and emboldening power of the Holy Spirit comes into us. And like, God is working, and I'm just a part of it. I can share. It emboldens us. We need to hear testimonies. I encourage you, those who are are joining the church today, uh, you know, talk to them. Here, tell them they've got testimonies to tell because part of becoming a member of Church of Our Savior is I require you to give your testimony to me because Lord knows I need some encouragement. Um, and I need courage. I need to hear it. I need to be reminded God's still working. Ask them, talk to them, meet with them, have coffee with them, 
Ask them, you know, how, how God's worked in their lives. And maybe you get the chance to share how God rescued you, how the kingdom of God broke into your life. And the gospel of grace transformed you and rescued you from your sins. We all need courage, and it happens in community. God, the Holy Spirit works in our hearts and give us, gives us <clears throat> that courage. It's why it's so important if, if, for here at Church of Our Savior. We want you to join a fellowship group, not just because, you know, we want everybody to be in a group and, you know, it's, it enables us to, you know, check some box off of being a successful church, uh, because it's, it matters that much. Just coming to church isn't enough. It's important. But you need, we need to be in deeper connection and relationship with each other. We need to be hearing each other's testimonies. You need to find a, a fellowship group or a small group. We have a men's group that, that meets during the week. We have a women's group that we, meets during the week. There's opportunities to get into smaller groups to share community together and how incredibly important that is in a life with Christ. We need help with having thankful hearts. We need courage in our lives, and the Holy Spirit works in each of us to see God's grace working in our lives. We need each other. Friends, avoid Christian community. Do it at your own peril. Because the truth is, the more isolated we become, the more discouraged we become, the more weak we become, the more cynical we become about life. And the further you go down that rabbit hole, despair is the end result. But when we join in fellowship with one another in community and hear about God's grace at work and the life of others, sharing life, faith, prayer, testimonies together, it has that power to give us thanksgiving, to give us courageous hearts, seeing how God's working in others that, and knowing that he's at that same work in us, even if we can't see it. And friends, we ultimately have this grace and this gift in our lives of Christian community because Jesus, in his greatest moment of need, in his greatest time of needing to see God's grace at work in others for his own encouragement, he was abandoned. He was alone. But he did it for us because he loves us. Amen. Because he wants us to be filled with that emboldened strengthening of the Holy Spirit that only comes in surrendering our lives to his grace and mercy. Friends, receive his grace and his mercy, the forgiveness of your sins. Receive him by faith. Get connected with one another in true community that you might have thankful hearts. And you might be emboldened with a new courage for the mission that God has called us to. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the new members who will be joining this morning. We thank you for the, the souls who will be entering into your greater family and baptism at the 11 o'clock service, Lord. Thank you for this encouragement of knowing that you were at work, that you're transforming lives, Lord. Will you fill our hearts with thanksgiving, even if we can't experience it ourselves right now? Lord, let us see your grace working in other people, that we might give thanks to you for all that you're doing. And Lord, will you give us that courage that only comes from hearing other people's stories, seeing how you're working in their lives, knowing that you're working in ours as well, and you want to continue to reach more and more people with the hope of the gospel, to rescue them from darkness, to bring them into your glorious light. Will you embolden us to share our faith with others? And Jesus, we pray this in your mighty, mighty name. Amen. Amen.